Hello, everyone. This is Jose Palomino with another episode of our podcast. Welcome again to our 10 things you can do this week to reignite revenue. And uh, we talked about the need to ask your best customers, your best customers, what they wish you did, which gives you a visibility to what they want from the market, really. And therefore, a big opportunity to maybe address something that they feel is an unmet need and will give you an edge relative to your competitors. Ask your team what they think is missing in your offering. Might do the same thing. Identify your target customer's biggest challenges, even if it has nothing to do with you, because that will give you other stimulating ideas around things you might be able to help them. That might also be as simple as connecting them with somebody in your network, finding other ways to be valuable to your customer. Then think about your product. How do you bundle a service with your core product? Something you get asked to do anyway. Add a subscription to something they buy from you regularly. Maybe a wear part or hours or whatever it is. And then very importantly, if there's a number one customer complaint, fix it. Lay out a plan to how you're going to address it. Because that number one complaint, if it's significant, and you're still winning business, it just means you're winning business with shrinking margins by and large. They're settling for something they're not totally happy with because they don't think it's that important, not important enough to switch suppliers. But at some point, there's a tipping point where somebody comes along and says, we can fix that, we can address that, or we do the same service without that pain, uh, and then you're gone, you're dead. And at that point, you might be dead man walking, so to speak, for a year before your contract comes up for renewal and it turns out they chose somebody else and now the switching costs to come back to you are too great. You've lost that business for a long time, maybe forever. And then from a marketing point of view, some simple tips I shared last time we got together was that uh, making sure people know how to get a hold of you. If you have a phone number on your website, don't make them go through a voicemail hell maze to get a hold of you. That's crazy. You, You take the effort uh, you, uh, whether it's SEO or AdWords or whatever you're doing to promote your website and they get there and they find your number and they call it and then they don't get a human being. Now, I'm not saying that you have to man that call at midnight necessarily, uh, but you should make it easy for somebody who you're trying to get a hold of, trying to make contact with to get a hold of you. And then make sure your LinkedIn profile, especially LinkedIn and B2B, Um, has a clear value statement. So people say, oh yeah, these are the people I want to deal with. This is the person I want to deal with. If you're you're in a professional services arena, that's really important. And it's clear what you do. Uh, So that's really important that your LinkedIn profile not be something you set up eight years ago, 10 years ago, and hasn't kept up with what you're promoting now. Your LinkedIn profile must be kept in synchronicity with your website. Your messaging has to be one voice. Otherwise, people get confused. And there's so many options these days in just about every category. Why would I deal with confusion? I just will go somewhere else where it's not so confusing and where it makes sense. So today, I just want to hit on two things that you could do by force of will, meaning you don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't need to hire special services. You don't need to buy special software to do what I'm going to tell you here. These are two things you can do if you decide to do it, and they will have perhaps as big an impact on anything else you do to reignite revenue for your business right now. And the first one, which is step nine on a list of 10, but the first one today on sales, clean up your pipeline. And what what does that mean? That means your pipeline, and I've been on so many pipeline calls with with, with business owners and their sales teams and companies, usually in manufacturing or OEMs in that two to $20 million range, uh, which is who we work with primarily, right? So not exclusively, but primarily. And, and in that sweet spot, we see pipelines usually on spreadsheets or maybe they're on Salesforce. It's a long list of prospects. It adds up to, they add percentage probabilities and they say, boy, we have $3 million in the pipeline, $13 million in the pipeline. But nobody believes it because intuitively they know it's half of it's garbage. So clean up your pipeline. Make uh, and, and the fear of missing out keeps people to keep things on the pipeline that are truly dead. 
you can create a category in most pipelines, certainly you can on a spreadsheet, to just say dormant, move it out. You need to know what your real pipeline is, the opportunities you're really working on. Second thing you do to clean up your pipeline is you call anyone sitting on a proposal more than what for you would be longer than usual decision process time. So if you normally have a 30 day sales cycle and you have proposals that are out there 60 or 90 days, those are the ones you call. Call them up. How are we doing? What needs to happen next? How do we advance this? Oh, you chose somebody else? Do you mind telling me why? That helps you clean up the pipeline, but here's something else it does. You might be one of three or four vendors that they're processing and you're the one that called. And all of a sudden they said, well, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna move forward with this. You will suss out, you will stimulate business just by making the call. And I've worked with sales teams that for whatever reason, they're hesitant to go after old business. Because, oh yeah, they, they, weren't, they weren't sure, they know what they were doing and they feel it's a waste of time, but it's not a waste of time. Whenever we've helped a team do this proactively, inevitably, they uncover, unpack two or three deals they thought were gone forever, dead. They weren't even asking. But you have to ask because your competitor is going to call your customer, your prospect, and whoever calls first. Not all things being equal. But that's a key. So clean up your pipeline. And step 10 and the second thing you can do in sales is review your top 10 deals. The 10 deals you are sure are gonna happen. The 10 deals you are most confident in. Now you may say, I don't have 10 deals. but your top five. The things you're counting on, the deals you are sure are gonna happen. And ask yourself and write it down. And if you're working with a salesperson on this, discuss it this way and say, if this deal, this deal right now is forecasted for March of 2022, or January 2023, I don't care what it is, that's your target date. So ask this question, and I, and I have a colleague and longtime friend, Ralph Witcher, who taught me this, and he's a longtime veteran, sold for Gartner, super successful, and it's just such a powerful statement that he, that he said. He said, okay, if you can imagine that day comes, that day comes, and the deal did not close, why? Why would it not close on that day? So imagine in your mind, going forward, it's 30 days from now, 60 days from now, closing day where you are, you're telling yourself, it's on your pipeline, you're telling your boss, or you are the boss being told it's going to close on that day, then ask this question. If we should imagine ourselves, we've like got on a time machine and we're, we fly into the future 60 days and we're on that day and the deal does not close, why didn't it close? And then pause. And the answer will be, well, they didn't want it. Okay, why didn't they want it? And now we're doing a five whys kind of thing. And it's very simple. They didn't have budget for it. We don't know they have budget for it. No, we, we don't know about the budget right now. Or a competitor beat us. Well, who are the competitors vying for this business? Who would likely be in there? What would they offer that we wouldn't offer? And you see, you start unpacking like a pre-postmortem of, and again, I'm not asking you to do this for your whole pipeline. If you have a lot of deals, that's not tenable. You're not going to do it in one week. But the deals you're counting on to make your year, the next five or 10 deals, by asking this question, and it takes 10, 15 minutes per deal. So if you have two reps, it might take you an hour each to go through this. And by doing this, you'll unpack the weaknesses in your pipeline opportunity and by unpacking those weaknesses you now have a chance to do something about it and figure out how do we counter that what would we do instead so again 10 things you can do if you play back the last of uh, this episode and the prior three episodes of, of this podcast where i've spoken to this specifically you will have 10 things you can do to directly and immediately impact your revenue right now this year reignite revenue get growth going again and it's been my pleasure to share these 10 tips with you i hope they've been useful drop me a line let me know if you've used them how they've worked out for you you could reach me through my linkedin profile at josepalomino.com 
It'll route you right to my LinkedIn page. Connect with me, message me, let me know how it worked out. You can also find me and learn all about our business, how we help businesses, uh, B2B business owners, uh, reignite growth uh, in a B2B context, especially if they're in that, that two to $20 million range where the owner is still very much day-to-day -day involved in their business. That is what we specialize in. And you can find that at valueprop.com, V-A-L-U-E-P-R-O-P.com. Feel free to reach out, schedule a call with me. Let me know if I can be of help. And if you have other ideas for other episodes that we can do, happy to do it. And uh, as, as you know, if you follow our podcast, we interview experts in the field. Uh, we interview owners. And I try to share some, some very net net ideas that you can apply right away to your business. So until next time, to your success, this has been Jose Palomino. My pleasure. Take care and have a good day. Hey, thanks for listening to another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. If you like this episode, and if you like the series, make sure you subscribe below. And also, if you liked it, please do review it. When people are looking for something exciting to listen to, especially the kind of content we're bringing, which is practical insights for B2B companies, this is a place and a free resource that they can take advantage of. Let them know about it with your review. So subscribe, review, enjoy. Thanks again.